All right, Clemson 30, Notre Dame 3. Sounds like a pretty good butt-kicking to me at the Cotton Bowl on Saturday night as Clemson moved on to the national championship game and Notre Dame was again sent home after a bad, bad beating in a major bowl game, this time in the college football playoff, their first championship-type appearance since the BCS championship game after the 2012 season in January of 2013. Okay, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. This is what we do, is we try to uh, bring perspective and context to the results on the field and the performance on the field because we know that that's what matters are the results on the field, the performance on the field, and then evaluating those results because that's what we do here. We talk college football, so we debate, we discuss, we analyze, and uh, of course, you all have your rooting interest, as I do as well, and uh, it turns into an interesting discussion when we try to determine who's really good, who's maybe overrated, who's maybe underrated, and what do the results really mean? Because we know that throughout a college football season that there are results that uh, clearly reflect and accurately reflect how good those two teams are or not good that they are. There are also results during the course of a season in which we have to kind of call into question, well, that game must be an aberration. Classic example this year would be Ohio State lost to Purdue by 29 points. Purdue lost seven games after they were throttled by Auburn by 49 points in their bowl game. Ohio State went 12-1. and They annihilated Michigan. They beat everybody else in the Big Ten. They won the Big Ten championship game by 21 points. Ohio State is clearly a better team than Purdue, but on one night... Purdue was clearly better than Ohio State, and we could go through the rest of the country, and with almost every team, we could come up with the same examples. I am bringing to you the Notre Dame case, one way or the other. Let's talk about it. So after the Clemson-Notre Dame game, in which the Irish lost 30-3, to Brian Kelly made these statements. He said, four big plays made the difference. Just four plays made the difference. He also said this was an issue with uh, a technical and tactical difference between the teams, meaning there were scheme issues, there were coaching issues, there was execution issues. This was not a talent-based issue. He also said there's not an overwhelming difference in talent between the two teams. Quote, quote here as well after the game, he said, If we coached better, if we would have made the plays that we've been making all season, this would have been a pretty darn good football game going into the fourth quarter. He also said, finally, that Clemson's extremely smart and opportunistic, but again repeated that there is not a gap between the two teams in regards to talent. All right. He also compared the state of the program at Notre Dame right now compared to six years ago after Notre Dame lost the BCS championship game to Alabama, 42-14. to 14. So I want to hear your thoughts on this. I've got my thoughts, and of course, we've got the results on the field. Okay, what he said about 2012 versus 2018 was, quote, different? Absolutely. I left that game, meaning the Alabama game in 2012, feeling there was so much work to have to develop uh, and recruit. Um, He said about Clemson, they were better today. I feel like this football team, meaning Notre Dame, is on the brink of a championship. He also said, quote, if we play as we did all year, it would have made a huge difference. He also said that we expect to be back next year. And again, he said that when he walked off the field after the Alabama butt kicking, that he thought, okay, I have got to change this program from the inside out. We need to recruit better. We need to develop uh, players better. We need to be faster and stronger. And Notre Dame has gotten significantly better, faster, and mostly stronger on defense since that 4-8 and eight debacle in 2016. Let's look at the various aspects of this game and Notre Dame's football team. 
Let's start at the quarterback position. Ian Book is a good quarterback. Uh, he took over for Brandon Winbush, and there was an obvious difference in productivity offensively. He brought the passing element to the team that they didn't possess before that. Brandon Winbush started three games, and even against the likes of Vander Vanderbilt and against a Ball State, could only score 22 and 24 points. Ian Book stepped in, and the offense took off. Also, we have to consider that their best player on offense, Dexter Williams, also after missing three games, was back in the starting lineup. But Ian Book was so much better than Brandon Wimbush, completing over 70% of his passes, throwing for touchdowns, throwing for big yardage, extending the defense down the field. He's a capable quarterback. But he is definitely the worst of the four quarterbacks in the college football playoff. Trevor Lawrence is better, Tua Tungavailoa is better, and Kyler Murray all better than Ian Book. He is, what, Jake Fromm currently? And in thinking about the quarterbacks that have taken their teams to the college football playoff since 2014, I liken Ian Book to Connor Cook, although he's more mobile than Connor Cook was. Uh, but Connor Cook was able to start some games for the Oakland Raiders. He made it to the NFL. JT Barrett's a good comparison, although Ian Book probably looks a little bit better. Most of the time throwing the ball, JT Barrett, a better runner. That's a close comparison. Again, Jake Fromm. But he's not as good as most of the quarterbacks that have not just gotten their teams to the college football playoff, but have been successful. Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota. Of course, Deshaun Watson and Baker Mayfield. And then uh, in this current class, you got Trevor Lawrence, Kyler Murray, and Tua Tungabailoa. So Ian Book would be at the back end of the quarterbacks that have played in the college football playoff. I think we could all agree on that. But it's not like he's completely out of the category and the worst of the worst and just did not belong in the game. He's a capable quarterback. He's one of the 15 to 25 best quarterbacks in the country. The issue, I believe, starts with the Notre Dame offensive line against the Clemson defensive line. And I don't know that it's a fair comparison considering that Clemson's defensive line, from a talent perspective, not necessarily a productivity perspective, but a talent perspective, might be, and this is not hyperbole, the best defensive line in the history of college football. The talent evaluation on this defensive line is that they have backups who will play in the NFL and will be drafted to play in the NFL. That's a big distinction. There are guys that uh, eventually make it on NFL rosters, but they are not drafted. Backups. And Dexter Lawrence, of course, did not play in the game the best of the best for Clemson. So consider that. So the Notre Dame offensive line is good. I don't know off the top of my head how many of these guys will play in the NFL, but I'm guessing two or three, if not more, will make NFL rosters on the Notre Dame offensive line, but they could not handle the Clemson defensive line and could not provide any running room for Dexter Williams except for the very few tosses that he got to the outside, more gimmicky kind of run plays that could only be used once or twice to, to, to try to spring him free a little bit. Okay, the wide receivers at Notre Dame are good. They have a fine wide receiver core, but I do see a difference between Notre Dame's wide receivers and Clemson's wide receivers in this aspect. Justin Ross blew up. He jumped off the screen. He was electric, dynamite. Justin Ross made the big catches in the game, but T. Higgins, in particular, has a similar skill set. These guys are burners. They can put it in the fifth gear, Notre Dame's wide receiver core is really good, but they need that guy. They don't have Hollywood Brown. They don't have Jerry Judy. They don't have Justin Ross. They don't have that guy to take the top off a of defense. They're really good. Miles Boykin's an excellent receiver. He will earn multiple paychecks on Sunday for years to come. Chris Fink. Good wide receiver, Chris Claypool. All these guys are really good. And again, Boykin's the best of the best. And Mac, the tight end, is a good player as well. But not the ultra burner. They don't have that guy. 
All right, the defensive secondary looks slow. Julian Love obviously knocked out in the first quarter, and he missed the time in which Clemson separated itself. So if you would have watched this game, and of course we watched it, I think, all together, play by play by play by play, watched every play of the game, I made the analysis at halftime that if you took every play of the first half and broke it down and said, who won each play? Notre Dame won more plays than Clemson. They fought hard. They played hard. But they won all the the plays that resulted in a five-yard gain for Notre Dame or only a one-yard gain for Clemson. They won the less significant plays. Clemson made the big plays with the explosive players, the ultra-talented speed guys, the explosive guys. They made the plays that changed the first half and gave them that lead. But for the first quarter and a half, it was a stalemate, 3-3. Three to three. N- Notre Dame kept getting the ball and driving about 30 to 40 yards. That was most of their possessions. They would get the ball. They would get two or three first downs. It wasn't like they typically went three and out. They would get two or three first downs. They would get to the Clemson 40 or 35-yard line, and then it would be one play that would put them behind the sticks, a penalty, a sack, uh, a negative yardage play in the run game, and suddenly it's second and 12. And then it's third and eight, and they did not have the type players to gain that kind of yardage against Clemson. And that's a big distinction between these two teams. Plus, again, a great all-time defensive line versus a very good offensive line for Notre Dame that's one of the 10 or 15 best in the country, but not the best in the country. And these defensive lines and the defensive speed on the edge is getting so good that really the offenses have to really be creative to game plan around the defensive speed and the disruptiveness of these players because they're just so good they can't be blocked, especially one-on-one. All right, the defensive secondary, I mentioned the absence of Julian Love. It looked slow. There were bad mismatches in the secondary, and we see secondaries getting burned. Clemson, one of them, on a fairly regular basis, most notably by Texas A&M and South Carolina. But it wasn't an issue with athleticism, a lack of athleticism for Clemson. It was blown assignments, inexperienced play, not knowing how to Uh, not knowing the proper technique and learning and developing the proper technique downfield in a one-on-one situation. It had nothing to do with ability to uh, run downfield, backpedal, spin, anything athletic. That was not the issue with Clemson in in the big gash plays that they gave up in the passing game. For Notre Dame, they just got burned. It looked like they didn't have enough fast players in the secondary. All right. Again, the defense is stronger. Dexter Williams, in particular, should be noted that he is one of the best backs in college football. But he just couldn't run against seven guys when he had little help. I will make a distinction again between the 2012 BCS championship game against Alabama and the 2018 game the other night against Clemson. In that Notre Dame stayed in the game for a quarter and a half. There was about five or six minutes left in the first half, and it was three to three. Then it quickly went to 23-3, to where from play number one, from the first drive of the game, Alabama got the ball in 2012, January 2013, against Notre Dame, scored. Amari Cooper, guys just wide open. Pass plays, run plays, they couldn't stop. Uh, Would have been Eddie Lacy at the time, right? T.J. Yeldon, Eddie Lacy, those guys couldn't be stopped in the run game. Notre Dame was just too slow. Their safeties were too slow. Their linebackers were too slow. And they got physically beat up from play number one. From series number one, Alabama, despite the final score being similar, Alabama led that game 28 to nothing at the half. They led very early like that, 21 to nothing. And then they just kind of put it on cruise control because that's what they did back then. And they threw 22 passes a game, and they threw for 200 yards, and that's what they did. But A.J. McCarron had some explosive pass plays downfield. Alabama couldn't help 
but throw for 300 yards in that game because there were so many wide open receivers downfield. So the Notre Dame effort the other night for as bad as it was overall was better than the effort against Alabama in 2012. All right, I was looking at recruiting rankings, and some of you put no stock in recruiting rankings and will argue this, and I get it to a certain extent, but recruiting rankings mean so much. Take any year and take the top 25 and take the top 25 in recruiting rankings, and they are so close. Yes, we have our aberrations of Texas on the downside, not being able to turn good classes into good teams. And then on the flip side, we've had the Michigan States and Wisconsin's and Kansas States be able to turn top 40 classes into top 10 teams. Kansas State, it's been a while. But mostly the recruiting rankings mean something. So who are the elite teams? Well, obviously it's Alabama, it's Clemson. And then to a lesser extent, it's Ohio State and it's Oklahoma. You could say Georgia as well. I took the recruiting rankings for Notre Dame over the last five years and compared them to a few of the elite programs. And you'll see where they're getting beaten by some of the elite programs, but not by the others. So let's go with the direct comparison against Clemson. The recruiting rankings tell us that Notre Dame should be just as good as Clemson. Notre Dame's recruiting rankings for the past five seasons have been number 10, 10, 15, 13, and 11. They've generally been between 10 and 15 in the country. 10, 10, 15, 13, and 11 have been the recruiting rankings for Notre Dame the past five years. Clemson has been 7, 16, 11, 9, and 16. Not much difference, just about the same. Now, Alabama and Ohio State, when it comes to recruiting prowess, have been in another category from the rest of the nation, and Georgia has caught up in the last couple of years. But Ohio State and Alabama have just been somewhere else when it comes to bringing in talent. Alabama, for the past five years, has been number 51111. Ohio State has been two two four seven three nobody's been close to those two alabama again has brought in the top rated recruiting class four of the past five years and number five the other year that would be 2018 ohio state two two four seven and three but again if we just look at clemson and notre dame very comparable now let's make the comparison against who they played common opponents in 2018 I typically don't like to do this unless there are a number of games to compare. If there's one game or two games, I don't think it necessarily matters. But when you start to look at four and five games in which two teams that we're comparing play the same opponents, I think it means something or could mean something. It has to be taken into context and um, home and away has to be taken into consideration. And at one point in the year, and uh, who could possibly have been injured and not available. All those things have to be taken into consideration. But the results, once you start to look at four and five common opponents, could mean something. So the most obvious difference between Notre Dame's performance against the common opponents and Clemson would be Pitt. Notre Dame struggled against Pitt. They won by one score, 22-14 at home. Clemson destroyed Pitt 42 to 10. Pitt did get within 14 to 10 in that game in the second quarter. Then Clemson wiped them out, only gave up eight yards passing, although Pitt did run on Clemson's defense. Again, Notre Dame barely gets by Pitt. Clemson destroys Pitt. Wake Forest was completely annihilated by Clemson 63 to 3. Notre Dame gave up some yardage and points to Wake Forest, but offensively they had their way, winning 56-27. So you would say Clemson had a much more dominating performance against Wake, but certainly Notre Dame did not have issues with Wake. Against Florida State, the performances were similar. It took Clemson a little while to break uh, Florida State's will, but once they did, they blew them off the field, 59-10. Notre Dame did not play with Ian Book in that game. They played with a backup quarterback, Brandon Wimbush, and they beat Florida State 42-16, uh, 42-13. And then the Syracuse game would be the notch in the belt of Notre Dame winning that game. 
on a neutral site, 36 to three. Although Syracuse quarterback Eric Dungy, who's the all-time passing leader at the school, so one of the better players we've seen at Syracuse, was knocked out of the game early and missed the rest of the game. But Notre Dame blew out Syracuse 36 to three. While of course Syracuse played uh, one of two tough games against uh, Clemson, Texas A&M being the other, and Syracuse went to Clemson and, of course, knocked Trevor Lawrence out of the game. But that was in the second quarter, and they were playing close against Clemson at that point. All right, what it comes down to this for me. How much better is Clemson than Notre Dame? Are they better? Yes, they're better. Was 30-3 to the typical score that we would see between Clemson and Notre Dame? I do not believe so. But I don't think it was a complete aberration that we would just never ever see Clemson beat Notre Dame 30 to three, but it would not be the common score between the two teams. Again, this is just my opinion based on what I saw Saturday night and based on the other facts of their performance against other teams. This Clemson team could be a little bit more special than some of the more recent teams that we've seen that were carried by Deshaun Watson because they struggled against certain teams. Clemson would not have been in the national championship game or won the championship in 2016 had North Carolina State made a makeable field goal that Clemson had nothing to do with them missing. The year that they also lost to Pitt, they had some very close calls. And of course, last year's team lost to Syracuse, a four-win team on the road. This team pretty much dominated everyone outside of Syracuse in which To understand the situation, Trevor Lawrence not in the game in the second half and then the game at Texas A&M against a pretty good Aggies team that's one of the 15 or 20 best teams in the country. Notre Dame struggled against Vanderbilt at home, a decent team, a top 40 to 50 team. They struggled against Ball State. They only won that game by one score. But again, Ian Book was not the quarterback for either one of those games. They played a Michigan team that we believe to be one of the top 10 teams in the country. And I think they still were at their best. And Notre Dame won that game by a touchdown at home. And then they played a lot of decent teams like Stanford and USC. Top 40 to 50 teams in the country that had down years. And some of them they dominated like Stanford in the fourth quarter. Like the games we mentioned against Virginia Tech and Florida State. Other games they struggled. Had you stripped off the names and the records of Notre Dame and USC at the Coliseum in the last game of the regular season, you would not have been able to tell who was the 5-7 and seven team and who was the uh, 12-0 and 0 team, except for the mistakes that USC made to hand the game to Notre Dame. Otherwise, USC played even with Notre Dame. So, Clemson's substantially better. They're decidedly better. I think there's a gap between, and we'll find out next Monday night, it's either between Alabama and Clemson or it's Alabama and Clemson, and then it's, take your pick, probably Georgia, then Ohio State and Oklahoma in that group, and they're probably by themselves as well because I think those three teams in particular are better than everybody else. We saw Michigan carve through the Big Ten and play much better than Ohio State, but then they got blown out by the Buckeyes. And then I don't know what to make out of this performance against Florida because they were missing so many players. But then I just think there's a whole bunch of teams that are right there mixed up between numbers six and seven in the country and about 20. Think about these teams and how they would play against each other. Mississippi State, Notre Dame, Texas A&M, Florida, LSU. How about Utah in Washington, Texas, Penn State, Michigan. You could even throw in a Northwestern, even though they're not as talented. Look at what they did against Notre Dame. It was a three-point game with two minutes left in the game. Very interesting topic here. I think Brian Kelly is trying to defend his program and his team, and he doesn't want his players to get beat down by thinking that they're not fast enough, they're not good enough, they're not talented enough. And the recruiting rankings would tell us that they're just as good as Clemson, but we can see on the field that they're not. For whatever reason, 
They are not. But they're not 30-3 to three worse than Clemson normally because the other scores of the other games just do not bear that out. But Notre Dame's a top 10-15 to 15 team. Clemson might be the best team in the country and is certainly in the top three. That's the difference between the two programs right now. That's the analysis I have. Would love to hear your comments and your uh, analysis of this comparison, Clemson and Notre Dame or others you would like to make, uh, as again, I think it's an Alabama-Clemson world, and we'll see if there's a distinction between those two. And then Georgia might be right there as well, but we will not get a chance to see them play uh, against one of those two teams again, although they played Alabama, of course, right to the hilt. Ohio State, Oklahoma in the mix. And then, wow, I just think that bucket of Notre Dame, Texas, Michigan, Florida, Kentucky possibly, LSU, Utah, Washington are tough to distinguish. Would love to hear from you. This is what we do here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. We break down the sport we love, rankings, ratings, discussion, debate better than anyone else right here at Mark Rogers TV.